Morning, Christopher. We're wow. just starting. Wow. Okay, so good morning on this already hot morning. I hope you had a good night's sleep. So we, since it's still cooler than it's going to be later, we'll be moving um, a little bit more, maybe a little bit more than usual. But uh, go at your own pace. Uh, see how your body feels. Uh, when it's warm, our body has a tendency to feel a little bit more lazy between brackets. Um, so respect that. But sometimes just going for that little extra will make you feel good. So let's stand in a comfortable uh, position, the feet separated, a little bit uh, wider than the hips. Like for me, it's really just a little bit wider. Um, if you feel more comfortable to be here, that's fine. If you feel closer. So you really have to feel your stand. Taking a breath in, closing the eyes, just relax your body without falling into your body. So feel that the legs are holding you without too much strain, but they're holding you. And then as you inhale, feel how your upper body is slowly starting to participate in the standing position. So maybe lifting your chest a little bit, bringing the shoulder blades down a little bit, lengthening the neck, and maybe your chin is gonna tilt. So it's really, we're not looking for anything. We're just exploring a little bit how we can extend our body without any strain. Your arms are relaxed, your shoulders are relaxed. If you feel that your shoulders fall forward, roll them back gently without bringing the shoulder blades together. So it's really about bringing the shoulder blades down so that the chest is nice and open. And then let's take a deep breath in and a long breath out through the mouth. So see if you can expand your breath in your belly. One more. And then gently open the eyes or keep them closed if you want. It's really up to you. And then inhale, bring the arms to the side, palms up. Stretch out your arms from your armpits. So very often we're going to stretch out from the shoulders. So we really want to go underneath our shoulders into these armpits and stretch our fingers to the side. So same thing, like imagine that we would be standing on our side, that our arms were our legs. So same strength. Of course, we don't have the support of the earth here, but it's not about stretching, stretching. It's about strengthening here. So just waking up a little bit. Take another deep breath in and a breath out. Turn the palms down and as if you're pressing onto something, bring the arms down. Inhale, bring the arms up a little bit higher. So not all the way up, but halfway. And now reach out and feel how you're gonna more easily access the length into your body. So pointing the fingers out, rolling the shoulders back. So watch out not to bring your shoulders towards your ears, finding length opening in the chest. And then turn your palms to the front and start to press your shoulder blades together. So don't compensate with your head, which will happen often. Sometimes we feel a lot of strain into our neck when we do this. So see if you can bring your head a little bit more backwards. So pressing the arms back. You, it's possible you don't go very far, it's okay. And then very gently coming back to the front, bring the arms towards the front, hands at the height of the shoulders. Turn the palms out, and then as if you're pressing into something, press your arms back. So you can go again as far as you can, bring the shoulder blades together. Different sensations here than if the arms are a little bit high. 
turn the palms back to the front and again start to press into something this time we're going to gently bend the knees interlacing the hands turning the palms to the front and press that wall away open your upper back you can bring the chin to the chest take a breath in and exhale inhale and exhale and then press into your feet lengthen your legs reach your arms up and this time your shoulders can come up to your shoulder uh, to your ears lengthening feel the opening in the waist press your feet down bring your tailbone a little bit more towards the heels lengthen out so also lengthen into the arms sometimes we think we're pulling and we're here so just observe what difference that can make and then from here release but gently look right look left just to bring a bit of movement in the neck even if we're not directly working the neck it's constantly compensating and then inhale bring the hands behind the head this time open the elbows so long neck open chest and then slowly start to push the skin of your skull away from your tailbone and your chin is going to go towards your chest your elbows can join each other take two breaths here so every time we exhale maybe we go a little bit further watch out not to round your upper back so we're staying as long as possible into our spine and then slowly coming back up keeping the hands where they are we are going to bring the left elbow towards the left lifting the right elbow so opening our side our legs are still strong so don't sink into your hips so strong legs opening the ribs opening the right side and then very slowly start to move your elbows so that they're parallel and we're looking up so gentle rotation in the spine it's actually a like a real twist into the spine so be careful how you move and then coming back to the center and then inhale up take a breath in and exhale towards the right so left elbow lifts both feet solidly planted onto the floor the hips remain in position the right elbow is going down so opening the left side make sure your left elbow is opening up so we create really that opening on the side especially in the ribs here and then very slowly start to look towards the ceiling so keeping your elbows in line and then slowly coming back and then back to center and release and shake it out so separate the feet we're gonna just twist from side to side so keeping the arms heavy lifting the opposite heel to where you're moving and then coming back to center so at any given moment if you need to make any move for your body to release please do that so stand again with your feet as wide as your hips or a little bit wider place your hands onto your hips if here you need a bit more balance for your for your stability please put a hand on a table or a counter or the wall so lift your right knee and start to make circles with your right ankle and then changing direction so we don't sink into our hips strong supporting leg and then point and flex a few times and then we're going to open up and close so move slowly so that you can keep your balance and then start to make circles three each side coming back and then changing direction so just loosening the hip joint here and then coming back and release keep your hands on your hips or on the wall lifting the left knee push into your standing leg so this the 
more you integrate your whole body, the stabler you will be. And then start to make circles with your left foot. And then the other side, point and flex a few times. Open and close and then circles. So three times each side and then the other side. And then coming back to center and release. And again, shake it out. Separating the feet wider, bring the toes slightly out and just move from one side to the other. Just gently starting to move. You can lift your toes or your heel. Just see what comes naturally. Keeping the shoulders above the hips so we remain in that long upper body. And then let's widen our feet a little bit more. And this time bring the right foot towards the short end of your mat. The left foot stays pointing towards the long end. And we're gonna bring our hips parallel with the side. So adjust your front foot so that you can bring the, the hips parallel with the side. Your knee is gonna, your front knee is gonna bend, your right knee is gonna bend, and you're gonna move towards your toes. So if your knee is moving inwards, roll your hip out by grabbing your thigh and rolling it out. And then press into your foot. So this time, strong back foot. So it's not just the right leg that works. It's the back leg as well. So pressing the outside of your back foot into the floor. And then bend your front knee, open your arms. Adjust your stand if you need to. So if you're bending your knee more and your knee passes your ankle, make your stand a little bit wider. And then look at your right fingers as if you're looking at nothing. Inhale, maybe go a little bit deeper. Turn the front palm up. And then for three breaths, we're gonna inhale up. And then exhale down, keeping the legs bent, inhale. Exhale, I should say keeping the right leg bent. Inhale up and exhale. Place the hands onto the hips, press into your right leg, right foot, and let's go to the other side. <clears throat> so again, adjust your stance so your hips are parallel with the side. It's different, it can be very different from one side to the other. So <clears throat> just observing that. And then we're gonna again bend a few times to warm up the knee joint. So don't just let your back leg follow. Make it an active pressing into both feet as you come up. And then exhale, bend your left knee. So left knee pointing towards the left toes, shoulders and hips aligned, and then open your arms up. Look at your left fingers. Inhale, exhale. And then we go for, for three breaths of dancing warrior, warrior four. So turn the front palm up and follow your breath, inhaling up and exhaling down two more times. And then inhaling, pressing, coming back to center and walking the feet a little bit closer. So we're gonna go into our, our first official balance. We did a little bit of balance before. We'll do the tree today. So um, if you're always going high up or always going here, maybe you wanna explore that other thing. You can go here if your hip is flexible. So uh, for some people, this is not gonna work. Don't place your foot on your knee. Keep it there, there. So if you're always here, maybe explore it going a little bit higher. So again, let's start in our mountain pose. Take a breath in and a breath out. And then bring the hands onto the hips, lift the right knee up, right heel, and then open up the hip and the knee. And then place your foot where you decided to go today. And by all means, if you need to change, that's okay. 
So if you're going higher, you want to press your foot into your thigh and tie into your foot. That's going to really keep you very stable. And then make sure you press, your supporting leg is strong. Your core is holding you. Your chest is open. And then you can bring your arms up. If you're a little bit lower, so below your knee, it's more going to be a work into the uh, hip stabilizers. So make sure, again, same thing, that your supporting leg is strong. Your whole core, your upper body is working with you. And then again, adding the arms. You can stay here. You can be a cactus today. It's, it's the weather for it. Or you can reach out your hands. So with every inhale, see if you can find a little bit more length into your body. And that doesn't mean just lifting the shoulders. It's really coming from within opening up and then slowly bring the hands in front of the heart if they were lifted hands onto the hips bring the knee forward and bring the foot down come back into your mountain pose take a breath in and a breath out Hands onto the hips, bring the weight onto the right leg or the other leg, depending which leg you've done. Lifting the knee, lifting the heel, opening knee and hip, and then going to the same side on the other side. So ideally we wanna to go to the same side so that our brain gets the same signals of balancing. So this is also balancing the left and the right brain. So for everybody, his left or and right brain have a certain balance, which can change over the years, but deep down, they are where they are. So sometimes when we do these balance poses, we fall out on one side and are very stable on the other side. So it has something to do with right and left brain. And then bring the hands back in front of the heart on the hips and bring the knee forward and release. And now shake it up. So we're gonna inhale, reach the arms to the side. Make sure your legs are, again, holding you strong, your core is strong. And first of all, we're gonna press our arms back. So again, that opening of the chest, and then see if you can roll the shoulders back, shoulder blades down, with the shoulder blades quite close. And then bring the arms back at the height of the shoulders. We're gonna bring the right arm underneath the left. So you wanna have the elbows on top of each other. First option is to give yourself a hug, but give your shoulder blades a hug. Second one is to lift your forearms, eventually crossing the palms together. So if you're here, stay here. If you have shoulders injury, move very slowly here. And what you don't wanna do is start to go banana all the way back. So you wanna keep your spine nice and long. You wanna lift your elbows a little bit. If all this is comfortable, you can as when your elbows are at the height of your shoulders, you can start to bring your forearms a little bit more together. This opens the upper back. You might feel as if they're all tiny, tiny muscles there. So especially if we're sitting at our desk all day and we're hunched over and at the same time working, it creates a lot of stress. So although those muscles are long, they are still stressed. So here we're giving them some release by opening them through, a, through the breath. So continue breathing for sure. Let's do two more breaths here. Maybe lift a little bit higher. And then release. And shake your wings. So let's open again, palms to the front, and then open your chest. 
bring the arms back at the height of the shoulders. So again, creating that distance between your fingertips from the armpits. And this time, left comes under the right. So it's important that the elbows stay on top of each other. So if you have to stay here and you're feeling the stretch, it's totally fine. Like everybody's shoulders, flexibility is different. There's a little part we can do about it, um, but there's a part also that's from how you're built. And then choose, maybe you can lift your arms a little bit more. See if your arms are at the height of your shoulders, See if you can roll the shoulders back. Maybe you can bring the forearms a little bit more to the front. Inhale and exhale. So we wanna, although there is a lot of effort in this pose or in any pose we do, at a certain moment we wanna land into our pose and that's where the work is done. So that's where we're really gonna start the stretching. So if you're still looking for where am I comfortable in my discomfort, at a certain moment, just maybe go back a little bit to find it again. Because if we keep on pushing, pushing, it's not going to get more comfortable. So at a certain moment, we have to stop searching and going deeper and then just stay here, land. And with the breath, you're gonna see you're gonna reach a little bit further. Let's take one more breath here. And then release. And again, let's release our wings. And shake it out. <clears throat> so we're gonna continue with our standing position. So separate your legs, hands onto the hips, and again, turn the right foot out. So we are the same distance as before in warrior two. And we are gonna first of all go into our warrior two. So bend your front knee, find where is the comfort in the discomfort in with your front knee bend. Press the outside of your back foot into the floor. And then we're gonna reach the right arm up. So keep your arm there and then place your left hand into your in, uh, your right hand into your left into your right hip crease. So left arm up, right hand into right hip crease. Sorry for that. And then start to gently bend over towards the right. So you don't have to push your hands into that hip crease. It's just that's where you have to bend from. Eventually you can bring your elbow onto your thigh. And maybe you can go a little bit deeper here. So again, walk your right foot forward if need be. We really want to stretch that left arm out. So stretching from the outside of the left foot to the left fingertips. And then start to open up a little bit. We might have a tendency to fall forward, so open up a little bit. There's a couple of options here. If you want to stay here, make sure you don't put too much weight onto your right thigh. If you want to go in a different, you can bring your arms parallel to go into full side triangle. You can bring your hand on the inside or the outside of your foot and then reach again. Find that reach. Maybe you need a block here. <clears throat> and then the last option you might want to try today is bring the left arm to the back, your right hand is gonna go underneath your leg and maybe you can grab your two hands and then open up. So all options are good. It all depends where you are. And then let's take one more breath in. Exhale, maybe go a little bit deeper and then inhale, press into your front foot and come back up. Bring the right foot again, 90 degree. Turn the left foot out. Take a breath in, so hips are parallel with the side. Reach your arms out and come into your warrior two. Bring the hands back onto the hip. So adjust your foot, make sure your knees pointing towards your toes. I know I repeat myself, but it's really important to avoid injuries to the knee. Reach your right arm up. 
and really reach up, create length. Left hand in the left hip crease. And then with a straight upper body, we're starting to bend. So at a certain moment, you don't want your hand to be, your left hand to be stuck there. So then you can place your elbow. Maybe you can sink a little bit deeper. So again, choose the option that you want to work on today. Both arms parallel, don't fall forward. Keeping the elbow or the forearm onto your thigh. Bring the hand down, reaching forward. Or maybe you want to do a bind. And we want to keep on reaching forward. And then very slowly, wherever you are, coming all the way up, bring the hands onto the hips. And this time, both feet are pointing forward. So take a breath in, keep your hands onto your hips and lower them to your hip crease. Take a breath in. And then very slowly start to go forward with a straight back. So go gradually. Although we worked a little bit in the legs, we don't, we don't specifically stretch the back legs. So go very slowly, roll the shoulders back, or you can interlace your hands in the back so that your shoulders remain rolled back. Your head is in line with your spine. Take a breath in and a breath out. And then eventually letting go of your hands, bringing them down. So let's walk your hands forward and placing the hands flat on the floor. So maybe you have to walk quite a lot forward to be able to do that. And that's okay. At, once your hands are flat on the floor, make sure you press more into the outside of your feet than the inside. So we don't want to fall on the inside of our feet. And then start to walk your hands back. Keep your legs straight. And then bring your head in between your arms. So we are lengthening our spine, pressing into our hands, pushing our hips back. Very wide legged downward dog. And then let's continue to walk our hands back. So our upper body is really rounded. And you can grab your legs if you can't reach the floor and see if you can drop your head and drop your upper body. So releasing in the hips here, if you're okay and you can bring your hands down by all means, just giving alternatives. And then very slowly walk your hands to the left. Let's turn our left toes to the short side, lift the right heel. Keep the hands on the inside of your left foot and bring the right knee down. You can tuck or untuck your right foot. Roll the shoulders back, lengthen your spine. So finding that opening on the left hip, left thigh, and probably also the right groin. If you want, you can go a little bit deeper with your upper body, keeping the spine straight. Elbows going back. If you want to explore, lift your right knee, press your back heel back and go from there. So be gentle. <clears throat> Observe how your body is doing this morning. But gentle is also respecting your body, meaning sometimes the body can do a little bit more than we think and the mind is just stopping us. and then bring the knee back down. Walk your hands back, walk them back to the center, lift your back knee, move your toes, and then let's go to the other side. So right foot points to the short side, left heel lifts, hands on the inside of your right leg. So your right foot is a little bit outside of the center. And then first things, First things first is lengthening the spine. Just that can give enough stretch for you. Tuck or untuck your back toes. Inhale. And then if you want to go deeper, finding a little bit more sensation, bend your elbows or 
You can even lift your knee and then press your heel back. And then very slowly bring the left knee down. This time bring your right foot towards the center. Come back a little bit so you can bring your right knee next to your left. And we're gonna go into child's pose. So you can choose white legged or knees together. So wherever you are, press yourself back into your child's pose. Take a breath in and then bring your arms back so that your shoulders can fall down. Your forehead should be comfortably resting on something, whether the floor or a block or a pillow. Take a few breaths here, fill up your lungs and feel the back ribs lifting. Reach your arms forward, press into your hands and as if you're pulling the mat back, hopefully you're not slipping, see if you can Pull yourself up by this pressure you're putting onto the mat. So lifting your hips and coming onto all fours. <clears throat> Wrist underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips or a little bit wider. And then let's just start to make some movements with the spine. No fixed choreography. It's your body deciding what you need. Maybe adding your head, your neck, bending the elbows whatever you need. And then coming back to neutral spine. We're gonna do four rounds of cat and cow. So let's inhale, lift the tailbone, drop the belly. Your spine is gonna follow the movement. So your head is gonna lift, your shoulders are going back. And then as you exhale, tailbone goes down, belly button up, start to round your spine, chin to chest. Three more times at your own rhythm. And then coming back to neutral spine. Let's reach the right leg back. So if you need stability, you can keep your toes on the floor, otherwise lift it at the height of your hips. So your ankle and your hips are in line. Watch out that you don't lean over towards the left. So the core is holding you here. If you're stable, you can reach your left arm forward and then push the right heel back. Reach forward with the left hand. Maybe you feel a diagonal stretch here. Take a breath in and a breath out. And then release. And let's go to the other side. So first the leg, find that strength into your leg, pressing the heel back, and then add your arm, and then find that length between your right fingertips and the left heel. And then bring the hand down, bring the knee down. Let's bring our hands a little bit more towards the front. Your knees a little bit more towards the back and press into your hands and lengthen your spine. So press your hips back, push your fingers down. The heel is touching, the heel of the hand is touching, but we are not pressing from the heel of the hand. So remember this imprint of your fingers, of your hand, for when we go in downward dog. Now roll the shoulders out so that you widen the upper back and continue pressing with the thumb and the index into the floor. Long spine, so push your hips back. <clears throat> your, your neck is in line with your spine. So every exhale, we go a little bit more back, creating space in the spine. And then inhale, come to the front, bend your elbows, and let's come all the way down. Bring the hands 
together as a pillow and place your chin or your forehead onto that pillow. <clears throat> Take a breath in and a breath out. So the tops of my feet are pressing into the floor. My legs are quite active here. And then I'm gonna bring my hands, uh, my fingertips um, under my elbows and my elbows are in line with my shoulders. And then with, by pressing only with the fingertips. So first we're gonna start and roll the shoulders back and then start to press into your fingertips. Press with the tops of your feet into the floor and lift up. So if you bring the shoulders forward, you are gonna work those pectoral muscles and close of your chest. So we wanna work them in a different direction by opening up. So your shoulder blades can come together. Take a breath in and exhaling. So the lower back is not working that much here. It definitely gets a bend. So let's do this one more time. Roll the shoulders back, press into your fingertips, come up. So it's just about opening the front of your spine, opening the chest. Your neck follows your spine, so you shouldn't be looking up. The, you're looking forward most probably depending on what height you got. And then exhale, coming down. <clears throat> Place, bending the right elbow and placing the forearm parallel with the front of the mat. And then we're gonna bend the right leg and grab your right foot with your left hand. So just that can be enough of a stretch for you. You can bring your right heel towards your bum and then press your thigh down. So keep on looking forward. You want to press your thigh down, press your hip down to feel a little bit more the stretch into your quad. And then release. And let's go to the other side. So bend your left elbow, bend your left knee, grab your left foot with your right hand, press your thigh down, press your hip down, and then bring that heel towards your bum. and then release. Placing both hands under your shoulders, tucking the toes, roll the shoulders back, press yourself into tabletop, lengthen your spine just for a moment. We just did, did slight back bends, but still. And then very slowly, let's come up into our downward dog. So press into your hands, start to lift your hips up. Press your head between your arms and see if you can find that length into your spine again. And remember the imprint of the fingers, so of the hand. So light in the heel of the hand, thumb and index pressing down, rolling the shoulders out, lifting your hips. My knees are still bent. I want to work on the length of my spine first. And then starting to lengthen the right leg, bring the right heel closer to the floor. Don't start to bend your upper body. See, we want to keep that upper body long. Stretch out the right leg. Let your exhale create space into your body. And then let's stretch out the left leg, bending the right knee. And let's walk our dog a few times. And then bending both knees. And again, from your hands towards your hips, find that length. And then as you exhale, bring the heels down, lengthening the legs. If your lower back starts to round, keep your knees bent. One day you'll get there. Those are long, big muscles that we're stretching. And then very slowly, let's walk our feet towards our hands. And when we arrive at the front, keep your legs straight for the moment and just allow your upper body to, to fall. So we want to release from the hips, keeping the legs straight. So maybe you're not going to go very far. You don't want to hurt your lower back. And then very slowly, 
um, so that we can maybe bend a little bit more forward, we're gonna start to bend our knees a little bit more and then very slowly starting to drop our upper body even more by releasing into the hips. So that if the hamstrings are tight, it holds in the hips. You can easily see that in this movement. So releasing, releasing forward. You can grab the elbows and then maybe roll from side to side just with the upper body. And then release your hands, wherever they're gonna be. So if you need to be onto your tibia or your thighs, please do. Keep the upper body long, uh, relaxed, and then start to lengthen out your legs. And then bend your knees again. Start to look forward and go into a seated position. So we're seated, our knees are bent, the weight is mostly into our heels. If you don't touch the floor, you can place your hands onto your thighs. Keep your spine straight, sit a little bit deeper. And then if you can, reach your arms up and then press into your legs and come all the way up and release. So coming into your Tadasana, taking a breath in and a breath out. Observing your body, your mind. So let's come back to the front of the mat. Taking your breath in, inhaling, reaching the arms up and then exhale, folding forward. Placing the hands down, and this time bringing the left foot back and the left knee on the floor. Bring the left hand on the floor, reaching your right arm forward so you can find length into the spine. And then inhaling up. As you're up, turn the palm out and press into your supporting arm and start to open up your chest. So I'm, I'm not just throwing my arm back. I want, I want to see if I can keep my hand and my shoulder in one straight line reaching for the ceiling and then see if I can open up my upper body. My right knee stays in line with my right toes. Strong supporting arm. I watch out not to sink into your left shoulder. And then coming back. Walk your hands back, lift your toes, lengthen your leg. So again, we want to have a straight spine here. So if you need to be higher, you can be here. You don't have so much hold, so blocks would be ideal. Or the floor. Straight spine for now. And then walk your hands back, your hands back forward, tuck your back toe, lift your back knee, and hop your left foot forward. We're gonna inhale and go for a straight spine, rolling the shoulders back, and then exhale, folding forward. This time, right leg comes back, right knee on the floor, placing your right hand onto the floor, wrist underneath the shoulder, and then reach your left arm forward. So we wanna reach and create space, and then inhale, come up with your left arm, Turn the palm out and start to open up your upper body. So create some, play a little bit with your shoulder blade. It's gonna make a difference. Opening up. And then slowly bring the left hand down. Walk your hands back. Lift your toes straight, left leg. Inhale and exhale. And then slowly coming back. Placing both hands down, tucking your back toes, lift your back knee and come into your plank. So for a moment, stay into your plank, push your heels back, tailbone go slightly towards your heel, press into your arms, don't sink into your shoulders, strong core. 
bring the knees down, the chest down and the chin down. Your bum will be up in the air and then push yourself through for your cobra. So depending how you feel this morning, you might want to go a little bit higher by pulling your hands back or you just want to stay here and maybe more work with the lower back. Inhale and exhale. And then tuck your toes, press into your hands and come into your downward dog. So again, find your downward dog. So once you found that comfort and discomfort, then you can start with your breath to maybe find a little bit more space. Keep it active, like it's a subtle active. It happens all inside. And then bring the knees down. And let's turn around. So let's sit and we're gonna sit onto our left bum. Our knees are gonna be to the side. So if you're really falling over, I would suggest you, you put something under your left bum. <clears throat> Taking a breath in, reaching the arms up, and then exhale, go towards the right. So grab your right thigh with your left hand, and then your, left hand, your right hand can go all the way around, and maybe you can touch your left hip, or maybe your left thigh, depends. So inhale, creating length into the spine. Exhale, gentle twist. You can look to the back if you want to. And then with your next exhale, come back to center. Press into your hands, come to your knees and go to the other side. So again, if like for me, I'm really falling over on this side. So I wanna put something under my right bum so I can find length into my spine. So inhaling, reaching the arms up, exhaling, rotating towards the left. So again, your left arm here can go and wrap around maybe use your body so you can really press with your left forearm into your back to open up a little bit more and then pull onto your left thigh with your right hand work with the breath for this one inhaling lengthening exhaling releasing And then slowly coming back to center. And let's very slowly come onto our back. <clears throat> so laying down onto our back, bring the knees into the chest and breathing deeply from the belly so that you feel that your knees are almost pushed away as you inhale and then as you exhale, bring the knees back into the chest. So do this a few times, inhaling and exhaling. And then bring your hands around your right knee or just below your right knee, lengthen out the left leg. For a moment, keep the left leg hovering above the floor and take a deep breath in again. And then exhale, see if you can push the left heel back, lift it from the floor and bring the right knee a little bit closer to your chest. So creating that space between your legs. Inhale and exhale and then bring the left foot down and see what happens if you can go further now with your right knee. Release your knee, so, but still keep it bent. Bring your right hand onto your right knee, left hand onto your left hip bone, and start to open your right knee towards the right. So see how far you can get without lifting the left hip bone. 
So we want to keep the hips on the floor, opening up towards the side. If you can bring your knee at the height of the hip, that's fine. If it's higher or lower, just explore a little bit the differences that that's going to make. So we're really gently indicating with our right hand the opening in the right hip. And then release your right hand, bring your left, your right knee back to the center, open your right arm in a T, bring the left hand onto your right knee, and this time go towards the left. So we're lifting the right hip here, we're going into a rotation, keeping the right shoulder on the floor. So focus on your right shoulder here and just bring the right knee only as far as your right shoulder, your chest can be open and almost relax. And then work with your breath again with every exhale. Maybe we can gently indicate to the right knee with our left hand how it can go a little bit further. And then slowly coming back to center. Bring both knees back into the chest. And inhale, belly breath. Exhale, release. Letting the right leg lengthen out, hovering above the floor. Take a breath in. And exhale, bring the left knee closer towards the chest. Inhale. Exhale, release. And now bring the right heel down. Bring the left knee maybe a little bit closer. Left hand on your left knee, right hand on your right hip bone. And start to open up towards the left. So keeping the right hip bone onto the floor. Working with the breath here. And then letting go of the left knee, bring the left knee back to the center, extending your left arm in a half T. Right hand comes on your right, on your left knee, and gently start to move towards the right, but the left shoulder is gonna remain on the floor. So maybe you don't get that far, with your right, with your left knee, that's fine. We want to open the chest, do a little more opening into the shoulder. One more breath. And then slowly Coming back to center, bring the right knee back into the chest. Take your breath in, bring your hands behind your thighs and start to lengthen your legs up. So if your legs have to be diagonal because of your hamstrings, that's fine. Just see if you can press your heels away and then see if you can press your hips down. So we don't want to press the lower back down. We don't want to crunch into our belly. We want to find those straight lines as, mu as much straight as possible. Take a breath in and now release your hands. Place them next to your body and very slowly bring your legs all the way down. And as they're down, we're gonna bend one knee and bend the other knee. Placing the feet onto the floor, we're gonna bring the soles of the feet together so your knees are gonna fall out to the side. And then bring your hands on the inside of your thighs and gently press onto your left thigh. So your left knee is going to go down, your right knee is going to lift up. So the distance between your knees remains the same. 
and then do the same on the right side. So we're gonna basically rock onto our sternum, onto our tailbone, from side to side, loosening the lower back. And then coming back to center, bring the hands at the outside of the thighs, closing the legs. Take a breath in and just for one moment, lift your hips a little bit, just to find that space in the front of your hips maybe. You can press your elbows down, push your feet into the floor, push your knees forward. See if you can lift a little bit higher. Keep on breathing calmly. And then slowly coming down. Lengthen the left leg towards the left corner. Lengthen the right leg towards the right corner. And windshield wipe your feet for a moment to loosen up again. And then bring the arms into your Shavasana arms. So shoulders should be relaxed. Palms relaxed. Fingers relaxed. Your toes are falling out. Your, your whole face is relaxed. So just observe if you may be tensing in the forehead or the jaw or the ears. Consciously relax there. Relax in the chest and the belly. Stay here as long as you want, as you can. If you wanna get out first, reconnect with your breath, feeling the air coming in very naturally and coming out. Moving toes and fingers and nose. Maybe gently moving the head from side to side. And then bring the legs back together. Take a breath in and stretch yourself out. Bring your arms overhead. Press your heels away from your fingertips. Take another breath in here. And then exhale, bring the knees into the chest but gently rock from side to side. And then roll over to one side, right side, left side, whatever is more comfortable. And then place your left hand or the right hand onto the floor, lengthen the upper leg and slowly come up into a seated position. Gently tuck your chin, keep your eyes closed if that's comfortable. Bring the hands in front of your heart. May your thoughts be peaceful, your words kind and respectful, and may your heart always be filled with love. Thank you for sharing for being here for you. I wish you a wonderful day. Namaste.